Hi guys, uh, this last class is just to update you about some new concepts about uh, metabolite channels and to talk about some of the complex that we have uh, in the respiration. The first complex is this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So remember that is the enzyme that converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. So the first step of the TCA cycle, okay, to provide acetyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA is very important for many, many other pathways, okay? We are going to see in the next class about fatty acids that use acetyl-CoA for the synthesis of these compounds. Um, part of it, the hydro, the hydro uh, uh, complex, it's a very big complex, so it's up to uh, 10 M Daltons. Uh, it composed by three uh, subunits, pyruvate dehydrogenase E1, E2, and E3, okay? So what is the advantage of having multi-enzyme complex? So you can uh, shorten uh, the distance between the catalytic sites of each uh, subunit, and these create a kind of channel. That's what we are going to see uh, here, channeling uh, metabolite channels, okay? So this can minimize um, the degradation of intermediates and also increase the catalytic efficiency of the enzymes. Okay, um, so this is, for example, uh, the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. You see here you have uh, EF1 alpha, EF uh, E sorry E1 alpha, E1 beta, and E2 and E3. Imagine that this is uh, different proteins that combine it, they make one complex which converts pyruvate here to acetyl-CoA here, okay? But many other things are involved. You see, you have NADH, you have NAD, FEDH, uh, many TPP here. So uh, you have, when you have this SH or SS in the proteins, it means that these proteins are probably re redox regulated. So SH means a protein that is reduced and SS means a protein that is oxidized, okay? So here you have oxidized proteins and here you have SH, you have reduced. So you have SS and then the tyrodoxin comes here and cleave this reaction, this, uh, this bond, and then this S become SH, which it become reduced uh, and not oxidized, okay? So each subunit here can be regulated by different mechanisms. One, one, me one subunit can be phosphorylated, the other can be for redox regulated, acetylated, and so on. So this makes the things more complex, okay? When you have complex, uh, different proteins that combine and uh, makes one uh, complex, the, this makes the story a bit more complex. And the, the most interesting thing is that, for example, these E3 subunits here can also uh, be part of other complex of the mitochondria. For example, the, for example, this protein here can also be part of the, the hydrogen um, uh, two oxoglutarate uh, complex and also glycine decarboxylase complex. So the same subunit can also be part of different complexes, okay? And makes very big uh, proteins. For example, this enzyme here is regulated by phosphorylation. So if you have this kinase that incorporates 1 ATP phosphorylate, this enzyme is this inactive enzyme. Okay? You have many, many times that the kinase is activating the protein, but here is different. The part of it, the hydrogenase complex, is inactivated by phosphorylation. Okay? And always, when you have a kinase that phosphorylates this enzyme, you have a phosphatase that dephosphorylates. So this phosphatase here is thus, is, uh, is thus uh, activating the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, okay? So this, for example, in plants, these occur in the light. So the kinase phosphorylates the pyruvate dehydrogenase in the light. So you have an inhibition of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex in the light. But uh, not necessarily uh, enzymes that make complex, uh, they can also interact to each other. I mean, different enzymes can interact to each other and, prov and f uh, produce a metabolite channel, which is also uh, named as, as metabolome. 
don't mix with metabolomics with metabolome or any kind of uh, description about metabolomics uh, metabolome is the same uh, it's similar to metabolic channels okay so this term was created by this uh, guy here uh, and the definition would be a supramolecular complex of sequential metabolic enzymes and cellular structure elements so take note about this sequential metabolic metabolic enzymes so it means that you have enzymes that are sequential in a metabolic pathway and they interact to each other to create a metabolic channel okay or a metabolome how this works for example we are studying here and up to now uh, reactions occurring separately for example we have the substrate one and you have the enzyme that produces this the compound b so you have the substrate a being converted to b by the enzyme one for example here we have the malate dehydrogenase and here you have the malate and here we have the oxalacetate okay so this is uh, the, the most simplified way that we study which is included in the book right so the substrate, uh, the product B here is substrate of uh, enzyme 2, which converts into C, and then you have the D being produced here. Okay, so this is the, the way that we study, but how this works actually, how this can work actually. When you have the association of these proteins here, so to create a metabolome or a metabolite channel, it's necessary that the enzymes interact with each other. Okay, so if these enzymes are able to interact with each other then you have the interaction of the protein one with the two and the two with the three so instead of being like that then you have a metabolite channel which the pro the substrate a is going to be converted to d without leaving the metabolite channel for example if these uh, reactions here are occurring in the cytosol so uh, the substrate a can be produced can, can produce the, the product b and this B can go to mitochondria, can go to chloroplast and so on because this is free, it's free in the cytosol okay? but when you have a metabolome no, this compound B here cannot leave the complex okay? cannot leave the metabolite channel it means that if you have the formation of this metabolite channel the probability that the, the substrate A is going to be converted into D it's much higher because these B and C intermediates cannot leave the metabolite chain okay you have an increase in the uh, concentration of B and C very close to the um, catalytic site of the enzymes B and 2 and 3 okay so and you can also have the uh, arrangement of these uh, compounds for example you have a, a association of 1, 2 and another 4 uh, enzyme and then you have the, the, the uh, the production of the metabolite E so you have different combinations that can occur it always depends if these enzymes can interact to each other okay the, the first thing that is necessary is the interaction between the proteins right so what is the advantage of one organism uh, create a metabolite channel so you have the concentration, the, you, you increase, so here you have an uh, example of metabolite channels that have been formed and here you have exa examples that uh, when you don't have a metabolome uh, produced, formed. So here again the, the substrate A can be converted to B by the enzyme 1 and the substrate B can be converted to C by the, by the enzyme 2. If you don't have a metabolome being formed you can you can have B being released in the cytosol or mitochondrial chloroplast or whatever and can be degraded by tox compounds for example and you see here so you have some B's that has been degraded or can be used by different pathways so uh, the same metabolite can be used by different metabolic pathways so when you have a metabolome you guarantee that this compound A is going to be converted into C because you have an enrichment of the concentration here okay so the enzyme 2 here has much more uh, B here than here in the catalytic site okay you have increase of concentration very close to the enzyme also uh, for example here you have a different pathway that can also use B 
So B, instead of producing C, can also be converted to D. So when you have um, the, the formation of the metabolome, this enzyme here cannot use the B. Okay, so then you guarantee again that the B is gonna be converted to C. I mean, you, you not guarantee that 100%, but you increase the chance that the A is gonna be converted to C, okay? And also the distance, right? So if, if you have, if you don't have a competition here, but you have a protein that is uh, in another location, for example, or is far from the B, this metabolite has to move until the C, right? So the distance is higher. So the distance here is very low. So you guarantee again that the A is gonna be converted to C, okay? So metabolite channels are created by the, pro the protein-protein interaction and you have the increase in concentration of uh, these metabolites in this catalytic site of the, uh, of the next enzyme. So what, what is the advantage of having a metabolite channel? So you increase the catalytic efficiency of the next enzyme, so increase the concentration close to the uh, next enzyme, which is uh, we call local enrichment of substrate. You have the protection from toxic intermediates that uh, is gonna that could degrade uh, the substrate of the enzyme. Um, some compounds are unstable, unstable, so they they lose uh, their conformation or they are degraded by different uh, uh, reactions. So in, in, inside of the metabolite chain, you reduce this chance. You avoid competition with uh, competitive pathway. So instead of being used by another pathway, used by the pathway that is the metabolite chain is involved. And also. Uh, it's possible to, to have channels by multi-enzyme complex and multifunctional enzymes, okay? So this is the main advantage of having uh, metabolomes. So what we have seen in plants, for example, that we have a big metabolome in the TCA cycle, for example, the fumarate can be channeled into uh, isocitrate by this enzyme here that interacts to each other, so it means that Fumarate enters this uh, metabolite channel and leave when it synthesizes, I think it's isocitrate or aconitate. We are gonna check in the, in the next slides. And also, for example, the glycolysis, the entire glycolysis, look from glucose to pyruvate, it seems that there is a huge metabolite channel here. So if the organism uh, we still don't know how these metabolomes or when these metabolomes is going to be created. But, for example, think if the glycolysis has to be activated by, by some uh, situation, environmental condition. Um, if you have the formation of this big metabolite chain here, you guarantee that the glucose is going to be converted into pyruvate by the advantage that I just said here. So. Here you have exokinase, phosphoglucose amylase, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then you have pyruvate being produced. So you have the substrate is glucose, and the product is pyruvate. It's gonna be produced by this huge uh, metabolite chain over here, okay? You have many other uh, metabolite chains already uh, described for plants. And another very famous uh, metabolite chain is the respirosome, so the complex of the uh, oxidative phosphorylation. So this is the uh, microscopic view, and this is how it looks like um, this respirosome. So the, how this works, you have the complex one, the complex three, and the complex four. We saw in the last class about oxidative phosphorylation, they separated, okay? But actually they can be together. Okay, they can uh, form this as we saw, as we call respirosome. Okay, this is the mammalia, the structure of the mammalia uh, respirosome. They interact with each other and they can uh, increase the capacity of channeling. But in this case, we don't know yet because uh, quinone cannot be channeled. Uh, I mean, the formation of this uh, complex we still don't know what is the advantage of this because the quinone, the, the, the channeling of quinone was by w another work, uh, they showed that it's not really improved by the formation of the complex, okay? We still don't know why, but we know that uh, uh, the, the complex of respiration, except the complex two you see here, they can combine together uh, uh, in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. 
So this is another paper that showed this uh, respiratory uh, super complex. Again, complex one, three, and four. And in this case, for example, you have NADH being, being degraded here by the complex one, electrons being uh, released. And instead of being like we saw in the last class, this is gonna be inside of this channel, okay? This is uh, a bit, it's a different view of the same thing, right? Instead of being uh, free, this is inside of the metabolite channel. So to finish, uh, this is one very nice work from my friends of the Max Planck. They um, checked which proteins from the TCA sac interact to each other. And you see here, these are the isoforms of the TSA cycle and also associated pathways, for example, part of the dehydrogenase complex and malic enzyme. So when you have a link between these nodes, the nodes are the enzymes and the link are if they interact to each other or not. For example, here you have the interaction of EDH1 with the IDH2. You see here that um, uh, many proteins of related to respiration they interact to each other. So they, they raise the hypothesis that perhaps these enzymes are working, uh, creating uh, metabolite channeling, uh, metabolite channel in, in TSA cycle. And indeed, they have tested if these interactions create a metabolite channel. So they tested different metabolites and they see that the, the fumarate here enter uh, these uh, metabolome here, composed by fumarase, malate dehydrogenase, citrate synthase, aconitase, and isocitrate dehydrogenase, and then is released here as isocitrate. Okay, so what is the difference that we were seeing uh, so far? So the fumarate you enter this metabolite channel and avoid competition with other pathways. Remember that citrate malate and fumarate can leave mitochondria to the synthesis of many other compounds. But once fumarate enter here, this reduces the chance that these metabolites are gonna be uh, released out of the mitochondria. So this increases the capacity of the mitochondria to uh, transform fumarate into isocitrate because this is inside of this metabolite chain. Okay? Okay, so this is a brief uh, view of metabolite channels and also the complex, the super complex that we have in the respiration. I hope you have enjoyed. Bye bye.